As we start thinking about U.S.-Latin America relations in the next presidency, most of the issues will actually be bilateral. The issues the United States faces with Brazil are very different than with Ecuador, than with Mexico compared to Venezuela. But there are a few issues that are still regional, either in that all of the countries face them and their issues that the United States cares about, or there are issues that can't be resolved between one or even two countries, that they demand a regional solution. And there are three in particular that the next president of the United States will face. There are security, immigration, and economic relations and ties. The first, security, is obviously at the top of the agenda for the United States, as well as many of these countries. We think often about terrorism, and there is some limited evidence of terrorist groups operating in Latin America. But the real issue for Latin America are drug traffickers and organized crime more generally. The United States is the largest consuming market for illegal drugs, and those drugs come, the vast majority, from Latin America. Whether it's cocaine, heroin, imported marijuana, meth or other synthetics, they come up, many of them, from, through the Andean countries, through Central America, Mexico, and then to our markets. And in return, hundreds or tens of billions of dollars flow back into these countries and to quite sophisticated, far-flung, organized criminal networks. These networks have increased violence in recent years. They've corrupted many local uh, governments uh, and economies, as well as in some places threatened even state and national levels. And this is an issue that concerns the United States and obviously concerns the countries in which they operate. We've had long-standing relations on security with many countries in Latin America, with Colombia, with Mexico, and more recently we signed an agreement with Brazil and Bolivia. But this is an issue that, while bilaterally is quite important, will demand a regional solution and is something the next president will have to face. A second issue on the agenda for many Latin American countries and the United States is the issue of immigration. The vast majority of migrants that come to the United States are now from Latin America. In many countries, particularly Mexico and Central American countries, 10% of their population or more now live in the United States. So there are close ties through the peoples and communities with the United States. Now, in 2007, the United States failed to pass a comprehensive immigration reform. And since then, immigration has been a contentious domestic policy issue, but it also has strong foreign policy repercussions. So the next president will face what to do with immigration. But there may be a huge opportunity during the next presidential term. In the last couple years, immigration trends have significantly changed. In particular from Mexico, the largest sending country to the United States, this last year we've seen what people call a net zero flow of migrants. The same number of people are coming in as going out. So it's a fundamental transformation of the way immigration works. And that may provide the next president an opportunity to change immigration, to find some way to reform it, and have huge ramifications for foreign policy with many of these countries. And the final issue for the president in terms of U.S.-Latin America relations is the economy and economic ties. Now, when we think about the economy or we think about globalization, usually foreign policy experts turn to China. And China, obviously, is the behemoth, the one that people are watching. But for the United States, and thinking about growing out of our economic doldrums through export-led growth, Latin America may actually be the answer. While we export $100 billion worth of goods to China, today we export three times that much, $300 billion to Latin America. And Latin America has 600 million consumers ready for U.S. goods, and more and more of these are rising into the middle class, increasing their purchasing power that can be beneficial for the United States, as well as obviously their own countries. But to take advantage of this, the next president of the United States needs to work with these countries. How do we deepen ties with them? There are smaller things the U.S. president could put on the agenda, things like improving the visa process, speeding up the way businesses and people can come and go. There are things like bilateral tax treaties that need to be signed to improve the way businesses work on both sides of borders. And there's also issues such as standards and harmonization that make it easier to build products one place and then send them elsewhere. There are more ambitious things that the president could put on the agenda, things like free trade agreements with many of our South American partners. All of this, the next president, along with his counterparts, We'll have to work to figure out how to deepen relationships, but make it complementary, not substitutive. 
how to make it a win-win for the United States, but also for the countries that we'll be trading with. And so these are challenges, but also opportunities for the next president.